From pop songs to the Lion King sequel, the character of Romeo Montague, or some adaptation of it, has made its way into almost every aspect of popular culture, remaining one of Shakespeare's most widely recognized characters to this day. But because of this, people often have preconceptions about Romeo as a sappy, lovesick teenager. But there is actually more to him than that, as we will discover in this analysis. To be clear, this isn't the case straight away though, as when Romeo is first introduced in Act 1, he is absolutely a sappy, lovesick teenager. And a pretty miserable one at that, because the girl he loves doesn't love him back. This was actually done on purpose by Shakespeare, because this kind of tortured, over-the-top, melodramatically infatuated character was common in literature back then, referencing how the poet Petrarch presented male lovers. Petrarchan lovers were tormented with love that was unrequited or not returned, and they tended to compare women to goddesses, mistresses, or other powerful terms. Sure enough, Romeo compares the object of his affection, Rosalind, in this way, saying, She'll not be hit with Cupid's arrow, she hath Diane's wit. Referencing both Cupid and Diana, Roman mythological gods and goddesses. At this point, you might be thinking, Wait a minute, who's Rosalind? Isn't this story about Juliet? It is, he just hasn't met her yet. So yes, Romeo's a bit of, well, a Romeo, in that he easily falls in love and is kind of woman-obsessed. This pre-infatuation is all done for a reason, though, as it shows us how quickly, impulsively, and intensely Romeo falls in love, which sets up a lot of his actions for the rest of the play. It also gives us the chance to compare his love for Rosalind to his love for Juliet, which are actually very different, and shows the audience how love can change a person. His love for Rosalind is more like an idea of love, because she never appears in the play, and also doesn't even like him back. It's a childish or immature infatuation from someone who has never actually experienced what true requited love feels like. And Friar Lawrence echoes that by saying, Thy love did read by rote, meaning that his idea of love is just from poems and books. That kind of love seems to make him miserable, as his friend Benvolio notes that he is in sadness because of it. When he meets Juliet, on the other hand, he is awakened to a real, tangible love from someone who loves him back. And we can see this shift when he says, did my heart love till now? Forswear it, sight. From here, his idea of love develops, and he becomes an active participant of a relationship instead of just a fanciful spectator. Romeo takes action by going to Friar Lawrence and arranging their marriage, showing that he is serious about moving their relationship forward. However, there are two ways to look at Romeo's attachment to Rosalind and then Juliet. We could focus on the comparison between his love for both of them, and argue that his non-existent relationship with Rosalind makes his real one with Juliet seem even stronger and truer. Or we could also question whether Romeo's love for Juliet is actually sincere, since his affections seem to change on a daily basis, and their marriage is never given the chance to stand the test of time. But whatever your interpretation, love is the driving force behind many of Romeo's actions in the play, and empowers him to go against the expectations of his family and society, which would have been very hard to do, especially at that time. Love isn't the only strong emotion that Romeo feels either. From the moment we meet him, he is noticeably quite a melancholy emotional character, who tends to see the negatives rather than the positives in many situations. His unrequited love for Rosalind leads to him wanting to be alone and wallow in despair, making statements such as, She is too fair, too wise, wisely too fair, to merit bliss by making me despair. She hath forsworn to love, and in that vow, do I live dead that live to tell it now. This is quite a dramatic reaction to being rejected by someone he wasn't even in a relationship with, so you can only imagine how bad it gets when he receives news that he is banished from Verona for killing Tybalt. Friar Lawrence tries to get him to look on the bright side, that he hasn't been sentenced to death, but he replies, Ha! Banishment? Be merciful, say death! There is no world without Verona walls, but purgatory, torture, hell itself. His tendency to rely on his emotions over reason often blinds him to the reality of his situation, which only makes things worse down the line. Because of his emotional nature, he is also impulsive, which is clear to see by the amount of hasty decisions he makes throughout the play. Since this is a tragedy, the hero of the story is bound to have a tragic flaw, or the character trait which leads to their downfall, and Romeo's is definitely his rashness or impulsivity. 
his relationship with Juliet is defined by impulsiveness, as he transitions almost immediately from despair over Rosalind to complete devotion to his arch-rival's daughter, Juliet, followed by a hasty marriage. He is so caught up in his emotions that he does not consider the consequences of his actions until it is already done. For instance, his decision to kill Tybalt in revenge is done in a moment of anger, even though he knew without a doubt that he would be killed or banished for doing so. And even then, he doesn't learn his lesson, ultimately leading to the death of both him and Juliet, as he doesn't wait to hear from Friar Lawrence or investigate her sudden and inexplicable death, choosing instead to kill himself almost immediately after he hears the news from an unreliable source. Despite his emotional nature, however, Romeo is also capable of extreme violence, as is evident from his slaughter of Tybalt and Paris. Unlike Tybalt, however, Romeo only fights when there is good reason to, and seems to try to avoid conflict as much as possible. The violence committed in this play is interwoven with the running theme of love, because while Romeo's love for Juliet is hindered by the violence between their households, his love also hinders the violence, because by hurting any Capulet, he is hurting the woman he loves. And at the end of the play, both Romeo and Juliet use violence against themselves out of love for each other, and ironically, this ends up being the thing that leads to an end in violence between the Capulets and Montagues. Let's take a look now at Romeo's relationships with the different characters within the play. The most defining relationship is of course the one with Juliet, as the whole story revolves around it. When they first meet, they are very flirtatious and like to banter, which gives us a glimpse at Romeo's non-mopey and emotional side. However, the initial happiness he feels is quickly juxtaposed by the sadness and tension that occurs after they are married, which highlights the intensity of both emotions and the tragic nature of their deaths. Despite their sad ending, Juliet is a crucial factor in Romeo's character development, from a lovesick teenager to the resolute hero of the story, willing to go against his family and friends, fight and even die in order to be with the woman he loves. We can see evidence of Romeo's transformation when he turns down Tybalt's challenge for a duel, even though it makes him seem less manly in his friend's eyes. He is trying to avoid the violence that characterized the men of that time in favor of peace and harmony, all because of his love for Juliet. In contrast, when we look at Romeo's relationships with his friends, particularly Mercutio, he is less inclined to be lovey-dovey and mature, and likes to joke around them, prompting Mercutio to say, Now art thou Romeo. What we have seen so far is not Romeo's normal personality, and seems to only come out when he's pining after a girl. In the 14th century, male friendships were a lot different than they are today, as young men were raised together and spent nearly all their time in each other's company, which made them much more emotionally attached to one another. Because he knows him so well, Mercutio brings out the lighter, more carefree aspects of Romeo's nature, but he's also clearly a foil character to him, as he is far more cynical about love than Romeo, and is more interested in the sexual aspect of it. Mercutio is sort of a masculine stereotype of the time, with his violence and misogynistic comments, and in fact the theme of masculinity is explored through Romeo's actions in comparison to hyper-masculine characters like Mercutio and Tybalt. Like I said before, Romeo's romantic nature and love for Juliet causes him to do what would have been seen as a very unmasculine thing, by turning down Tybalt's challenge to duel, and he even says that Juliet's love makes him effeminate. This is contrasted by Mercutio's eagerness to duel in his place, which sadly leads to his death. And because Romeo is so attached to Mercutio, he is overcome with grief and a desire for revenge, killing Tybalt even though he knows that he is Juliet's cousin, and that doing so will lead to severe consequences which will destroy both their lives. Not much is mentioned about Romeo's relationship with his father and mother, and it is really Friar Lawrence who acts as a substitute father figure for Romeo in this play, providing advice and guidance in his life throughout these incredibly tumultuous events. He serves as a prophetic voice of caution against the intensity of his and Juliet's love, saying, These violent delights have violent ends. Unfortunately, Romeo rarely actually heeds the friar's advice due to his impulsivity and reckless nature, which of course leads to his downfall. So from what we have learned about Romeo, it seems as though his tragic flaw is a double-edged sword. It fuels the passionate love that defines his character and his relationship with Juliet, but it also propels him towards an inevitable end that is full of loss and death. 
His sad ending could be interpreted as a cautionary tale against the dangers of unchecked emotions and impulsivity. But he could also be seen as the unfortunate victim of a cycle of violence that really didn't even have anything to do with him. What are your thoughts? Is Romeo a tragic hero? Or a rash and impulsive fool? Or something in between? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned for follow up analysis videos soon to come. See you next time.